So the 2024 season is about to get underway and I thought it's a good time to look back through my transfers because we've made so many of them, but also have a look to see how the first couple of seasons has gone for other teams in the league. Now, if you are new, please make sure you do go down and subscribe to the channel so you do not miss any more content going further forward. My name is Paul, also known as the Northman. So... We're going into our third season as A, B manager after a third place, then a second place finish. We are hoping for the title in season three. Um, it is going to be tough due to the fact that KI are now a professional club and we, well, we are not. They are paying players over a £1,000 a week, which we are not. And they do have the two highest transfer fees so far this season paid out bringing players from over in Denmark. I mean, we have spent 5000 I mean, give us that. We have spent a little bit of money, but we're not on the same level as KI. Now, I wanted to look to see why are KI professional only going into our third season in the Fair Islands? So I went under the schedule for last season, and that is what made me understand. They managed to get to the Europa Conference League group stages, which would have bagged them a couple of million pounds which then obviously can mean they can make themselves professional. They also got some wins in the league. Now, bear in mind, football manager, I don't actually know if it's still a thing. I would assume it is where you've always needed over a million in the bank for your club to be able to turn professional. And um, Well, KI getting to the Conference League group stage in the second season definitely would have achieved that. Um, if we go through, if we just remove, um, if we remove the league stuff and just select... The, the European competitions. You can see, they started in the Champions League um, first qualifying path. That was due to them winning the league in Season 2. Don't get me started on that. See the previous video to see how we blew it. Um, and they beat New Saints of Wales 5-0 on aggregate before, I think, Astana is Kazakhstan. It is Kazakhstan. Um, they then played a stand from Kazakhstan in the second qualifying round, losing 7 Zero on aggregate, but that put them into the Europa League champions path. They then went out to Legia Warsaw, 5 0 on aggregate. So they've gone from the Champions League to the Europa League. They then went into the Europa Conference League, fourth qualifying round, which they managed to beat. Is that a Luxembourg? It is a Luxembourg team. Oh, boss on this. They won 2 0 away from home, a 1 0 defeat at home to Dud. Dudde Lange, nailed it. Um, but that put them through 2-1 on aggregate, which they saw them into the conference group stage. That That's insane. That is insane. Um, if we look at their squad, shall we? And just Let's have a look at their highest earner. Their highest earner is um, Fredericksburg, a fair eyes winger. And he is a very solid player. He's a very solid player. They've got a Latvian striker here. They're paying 1.1k a week too. We can't see all his attributes, but he's definitely decent. And he would definitely go straight into our squad as the AB team. But if we look back to the first season, Viking, um, Viking Gergotte came in second place ahead of us, which means in the second season, they would have been in European competition. So let's go on to the schedule and let's see how they did in this um, second season. Yeah, they didn't do too well. They um, played Dynamo Batumi, which I'm guessing is a Georgian side. It is a Georgian side. Um, they lost 2-1 away from home before 4-4 at home. So they actually went out in the first qualifying round of the Conference League. So they were the other team who went into Europe. I think there was four teams, so let's go back. Yeah, 7 Vesta also took part in Europe in the second season. So let's go on second season. They actually made it to the second qualifying round, the same as we did as um, AB manager. So they knocked out Icelandic side KR in the first qualifying round, won all the way from home for a 2-0 victory at home. They then came up against TSC, who I um, back at Topola. Is that a Bosnian, Serbian, right side of the world? Um, they went one all at home before losing four nil away from home, so Vesta didn't um, do too well in Europe that season. But going into the into the third season, then we will have um, Ki in the Champions League, and we are in the Europa Conference League. 
Um, Vikinger, Goethe are in the Conference League and 07 Vesta. So it's the exact same teams going into European competition for this season coming up. So looking at some of the other transfers which have happened then. So KI, as we said, signed two players from Denmark. you got Defender here who, from what we can see, does look very, very solid, 27 years old. Hopefully he sticks around for two years, because if he's in Denmark, for, sorry, in Fair Islands for two years as a Danish player, he then qualifies to play for the Fair Islands national team, which would be nice. And Daniel Johansson, who now can play for, he is a Fair Islands player. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see there. He started EB, then HB, then went over to Denmark, and now has come back. Um, okay, not bad. Happy with that. Um, our sign we will look at in a second. KI brought a player for Michelin, um, a goalkeeper, 22 years old. He, he looks okay from what I can see. He doesn't blow me away to the point where I want to sign him. The last person we look at, Niels Nielsen, who, 28 years old, doesn't look amazing. He looks like he might have a good bit of pace, good determination, average work rate, average dribbling, Poor finishing, very poor long shot, poor passing. I think, well, the only paying £210 a week wages, but for us, £210 a week is actually quite a lot of money. So talking about us, we've made some signings. We've made enough signings to justify a pre-season video, let's put it that way. So after the season ended, which was already agreed, was um, Pater Sørensen was going to come in on a free from um, Vikinger Goethe. A decent centre mid for Fair Island's level. Um, maybe hasn't developed how I'd hoped when we pre-arranged the contract and when I gave him some caps at the age of 18, but we'll see how he develops. Um, the next player we're going to look at, I'm going to have to pop down. We're going to jump between, so you're not going to keep seeing this screen. Tony Mietene comes in on a free transfer with only a £100 a week appearance fee, no unused sub fee, etc., Season 1 will be playing for our B team, but I actually have a plan for Season 2 that he moves up into the first team because we are looking like we might be losing both our centre-backs at the end of this season. So the fact I've brought in players and I'm planning ahead, I'm really pleased with, and he is going to tear things up in the second tier of the Fair Eyes League. Daniel Söderberg, I think, is a fantastic signing. Players... Centre back, defensive mid, centre mid, attacking mid, can play on the wings as well if needed. Very solid squad player contractor player for a couple of years. Really pleased with that. I wanted to add some experience. Maybe I didn't need to sign these players, but we needed more depth in the squad. I felt that going into our second season, our squad just didn't have that depth and I didn't want to make the same mistake again. He can't run. He has no stamina. He's not strong. But... Technically, he's absolutely insane. And I don't want to say I've made the same mistake twice. But we also signed a central midfielder who can't run, etc, etc. Basically, repeat what I've just said on the last guy. But two Icelandic players have joined us. Both very experienced and adds depth to the squad. They might not play many games through the season, but they've added that depth. I felt when we had two or three injuries, we really struggled because we just didn't have the depth of quality. And the final sign on last season's page was um, Makela. Makela. Uh, winger comes in, very decent player, comes in only on one year deal, so he does have to impress us enough to keep a contract for another season. But he doesn't look too bad. He is 30, so that does go against him in terms of me hoping he could maybe get better. But all around, he's just a fairly solid player. The next player to look at, I took a punt on him. I couldn't see all of his information. He was playing in the fair rounds under 19s, which I find weird. I couldn't see his stats, even though he's in the international setup where I'm the manager of the national team. Um, he's not the worst player, but he's definitely only going to be a B team player. Definitely only going to be a B team player, but he is only on £10 a week. And in the second tier, he'll be okay. The next player is our record signing, Alaire. And I'm excited about him. He's a left-footed right midfielder. He has very decent attributes, very all-rounded as a winger. I'm excited about him. Comes on a what, three-year contract, three seasons he's going to be with us. And he's good. Only 18 years old as well. He's good. He's good. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I think he's good. Another player brought in cost us money, 1.3k. 
Um, but with the idea that long term he could develop into something very special is Jorg van Olsen. And he, technically, as a central defender, very good. Mentally, as a 16-year-old central defender, very good. Physically can improve. But I'm excited about him. Joins us on a four-season contract on £25 a week. I think he could be a very, very good purchase. Bit of a panic buy. My players were kicking off. We didn't have enough left-backs. We did only have one left-back, to be fair. I do kind of understand Brought in on loan, costing us absolutely nothing just for the season. Swedish, 21 years old. He's not the best, but he's also not the worst. I think we can accept it as a backup left-back. And as the panic for left-backs continued, I actually put in an offer for this guy as well, Stian Mulder. £160 a week. The reason I agreed on it, even though we brought in the left-back on loan, is he can play centre-back and left-back. And again, it adds a lot more depth to our squad. That was the final signing. And when you look at the depth on this squad now, we have a lot of players who are labelled as being able to play for the B team, but can also be good enough to play for the first team. And I think we've added a lot of depth and a lot of quality to this squad. And I, I am really, really pleased with what we've done here. I think when you look at how deep our squad is with quality now compared to last season, I think we've done good business. Now, tactically, a couple of adjustments. Inverted winger for Michaela, um, personalised instruction as well. And Allah as well as an inverted winger on attack, personalised instruction again. So if a substitute comes on, they will go back to just a normal winger. And centre midfield for Sorensen, personalised instructions just to tell him not to take so many risks because he's not that type of player quality-wise. Now, as we add a bit of quality to the team, I have said to play out a defence and overlap on the full of our full-backs overlap. I just want to try to play out a bit more, retain possession defensively because our pass percentage completion without defenders was quite low last season. So we are working on fixing that the final thing just to go through is our staff changes over the summer so our assist sorry over the winter our assistant manager left us um he just he just didn't want to be with us to be honest with you um so he's gone we couldn't get our new assistant manager to be head of youth and assistant manager so he's come in as just assistant manager he's so good he's so good as a head of youth as well I mean, when he got ahead of you, I just wish he would have agreed to it. Comes in on a one-year deal. I hope we can keep him around for a long time. I really do. So our new head of youth, just for a one-year contract, because, again, he's not the best, and I do hope we can improve him. Um, comes in Hayden Hansen, head of youth slash coach. New under-18 manager comes in. Again, he's not a bad player. Could potentially step up to head of youth. Stroke under-18 manager, if possible. New B-team manager. Again, not a bad player. Not a bad player, not a bad manager. I'm sure he wasn't a bad player as well. I actually signed a scout. He's costing us £70 a week, but I've actually signed a scout. Going into our third season, we actually have a scout. A new coach coming into our under-18s. Because he didn't want a contract. But if he joined our A team as a coach, he wanted a contract. So I'm hoping after a year at the club, he'll agree to step up to maybe B team on non-contract, which means his coaching skills are used in the A team training as well. And finally, we needed a coach slot and we literally run out of coaches who are willing to join us. So he's not the best, but he has agreed to come. It does put our coaching stats up a little bit. We're still not the best. We're not even close to the best in the league. But we're doing the best we can with what we have. Financially, going into the season, we have 186000 in the bank. So financially, we're looking solid. And we have a transfer budget of 111k. Well, original budget was 182 k But obviously, when I offered them a high win bonus, if we do well in the league, that dropped down. Wage budget of 10k, we spend on 5, I don't think, we we can't afford to get towards 10, that's crazy. At the minute, that's crazy, we need a good European run before I even consider spending that much money on wages each week. So I do think going through this season, our players' wages will probably end up being roughly around the same as what we spent last season. Staff wages could potentially go up a little bit due to the fact that I've signed a scout. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm probably not going to use him. If we're going to the scouting side of things, I don't have a scouting range active. 
and I don't plan on really spending anything. The only scouting budget we've used, which we are in the red for now, is um, I messed up and tried to to scout some people in Africa, and agreed to um, agreed to sign this guy when I could only see his um, finishing and fitness. I um, it's like therapy. I'm really sorry. Uh, this might be the biggest waste of money I've ever done. But you know, sometimes in management, you make a mistake. This is my mistake. So let's just pretend it. Let's let's get off that screen. Let's pretend it never happened. But that's the preview for this season. Hopefully, you're looking forward to this season as much as I am. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Can't believe I signed that player.